Hello and welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. This is episode number 190. I'm Patricia Steer and Mark Sargent is here. Hello. I'm Chris Angel, Mind Freak. Wow. Ooh, he scares me. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for being here on another secret show. It's a regular Wednesday feature of this channel. Today we're going to talk about rapper B.O.B., singer Stevie Wonder. We're going to talk about basketball star Kyrie Irving. And we're going to talk about Flat Earth meetups and the conference, as we often do, as we gear up toward the conference and as more and more meetups happen. We're going to talk about D-I-T-R-H's, Dirths or Dirts, as some people call him. Ditra. Billboard. Ditra. That's another one. His billboard. And in the live chat, I have uh, put a link so that you could, if you have a couple of extra bucks, donate. I've donated to put that thing up. And it's going to be in Raleigh, North Carolina coming up next month, October 2017. We are in September, September 27th, the day of this recording, 2017. So I will uh, spam that in the chat or if one of my moderators will grab it and spam it occasionally, that would be much appreciated. Hello to all the sweet potatoes in the live chat. Um, we have a lot of good things to talk about and we'll be headed into the live chat to say hi to everyone and share anything that you want to share, answer any questions that you have or you know, whatever, 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 whatever. So uh, anyway, uh, what should we talk about first? Shall we start with Kyrie? Because you've got something that you'd like to talk about. Um, the Kyrie thing, I do have to just tell a little bit of something before you read what you've got. When I first heard about Kyrie Irving recently, I just read mainstream headlines that said Kyrie was backpedaling. And I thought, oh, yeah, well, there you go. That's celebrities. You can't trust celebrities. Um, yep, this is to be expected. What a shame, but predictable. What a chicken. I fully believed he believed in flat earth and he, uh, you know, either was told by somebody to step back or he took it upon himself because he just went with a new team and maybe the new team told him, uh, 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 we want you here, but not if you talk about flat earth. And then I looked a little closer and I should have done that from the beginning, being the fact that I'm a person in a constant state of awakening. I'm not going to say I'm awake. There's so much more I have to learn, but I've found many things to be true that, uh, many things to be false that I grew up thinking were true, as we all have on this journey that we're, we're on. One of them is flat earth. There are so many other ones. Why didn't I look into the Kyrie story a little deeper? Why did I believe the mainstream media headline that uh, he'd stepped away from flat earth and was kind of punking us all? Jaronism put out a really good video addressing this, and I encourage you to go take a look. And Mark, you've got something you want to read to us. I do. And to preface this, I'd been following the whole Kyrie thing a little closer because you know he's one of the potential poster children for Flat Earth. And he came on ESPN, I think about six weeks ago, and stonewalled the the guys who were interviewing him on ESPN where they were going to him and he remember the trade is art was already in the works and he was already going to Boston but he wasn't you know he he wasn't backing down from anything and he was basically giving one and two syllable answers to just about any question they they asked him so when I heard this when I saw the story I the first thing I looked like looked at was where the story came from and the story how it started and how it was replicated all was Boston it was totally Boston. It was a Boston radio station that interviewed him. It was the Boston papers that picked it up. And of course, that is what you would expect. Because if you are going from one city to another, you only have one chance to make a first impression. And I'm sure his agent and other people, you know, there's million there. If you're going to Boston, the Boston people want to know if we're paying you multi-million dollars a year to play basketball, we would like you to step in and represent us. You know, you know, Boston's a hub of technology. I mean, MIT's there for God's sakes. So that's how the story spread. And it spread pretty quickly. A lot of people didn't even listen to the interview, including me. But I knew there was only so far he could backpedal anyway. Because remember, when he initially came out for Flat Earth, this was February. That was eight months ago. I'm sorry, you don't backtrack from eight months ago. That's that's an eternity in the media world. The concrete has hardened. There's nothing to come back from. And so when Jaron, and, and I love the fact that Jaron, what happened was a whole bunch of people sent <laughs> Jaron the article. You know, the article is in, and Jaron's listened to the thing and he was getting, he's like, you know what? That's not what he said. So just a little while ago, Sports Illustrated, the Bible of sports, came out with an article and I'm going to read it to you. It's mm -hmm. pretty short, but it's called Kyrie Irving passes on the chance to walk back flat earth comments. 
And it goes a little something like this. Uh, and it's from Dan Gartland. If anyone knows him, knows how to get a hold of him, uh, I would highly recommend tweeting this guy. His Twitter, I think, is on the internet. I don't know if his email is. It's Dan Gartland, G-A-R-T-L-A-N-D. And he wrote it uh, just last night. This is the headline on CBS Boston atop a clip of Kyrie Irving's interview in on 98.5 FM, The Hub's Toucher and Rich. Kyrie Irving admits he was trolling with his flat earth theory. But here's the thing. Kyrie doesn't do that. The host practically begged Irving to say he was kidding about the whole flat earth thing. You're trolling everyone, aren't you? One asked. You don't believe that, the other asked. And then Kyrie went on to the issue uh, to issue a total non-denial. You can listen to the relevant portion of the interview here. And then I'm just going to read that for you. It's super quick. And this is Kyrie speaking. Look, look, here it is. All I want to do is be able to have that open conversation. It was all an exploitation tactic. It literally spun the world, your guy's world. It spun it into a frenzy and proved exactly what I thought it would do in terms of how all this works. It created a division or literally stand up there and let all these people throw tomatoes at me or have somebody think I'm somehow this different intellectual person because I believe that the earth is flat and you think the world is round. It created exactly that. It did exactly that to where it became like, because I think different, does that ever knock my intellectual capacity or the fact that I can think different things than you can? That was the intent behind it. Do your own research. Don't come to me and ask me. At the end of the day, you're going to feel and believe the way you want to feel, but don't knock my life over that. Whenever I'm doing something, I know my intent behind it, and it is exactly proved what I thought it would. And that was the end of what Kyrie said. The author then finishes it with this. Where in there does he admit he was trolling? It sounds more like he's saying he was trying to make a point about mocking people for their factually incorrect personal beliefs. He even comes close to doubling down when he says, at the end of the day, you're going to feel and believe the way you want to feel, but don't mo knock my life over that. The story is never going to die until we send Kyrie into orbit. Mm. And that was the, the last end of the part, we could have done without that. Well, but it, but it's sort of true in a way. What he's saying is until you, you send Kyrie to space, he's not going away. He's, if he isn't back down to the Boston radio station before he's played a single game in Boston, he is not going to back down. But you see where the media led led this. Uh, you know, the rumor mill started quickly, and that was the Boston wanted to say, "Hey, our our relatively new star point guard is not a flat earther. We're going to just say that right right off the bat. We're going to have we're going to have we're going to push this. We're going to repeat it as fast as we can and hope it sticks." And then Sports Illustrated comes out and says. Eh, no, not what, so fast. Not so fast. He didn't, he didn't say anything like that. But quite a few people had not listened to the interview. And yeah, they were... Me, they, for example. I mean, and many other people, too, because I heard a lot of people saying, oh, you know, Kyrie's stepping back. Kyrie's not a real flat earther. By the way, what is a real flat earther? That's another thing probably we need to... We need that to is a good point. So, oh, but 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 let me let me clarify one thing here. And that was... Yes, it, it, what he said, it, he, he basically issued a non-denial, which is a double negative, that's tricky, mm. but he also didn't get on his soapbox either. So it's not like, because if you listen to it, and I, I did listen to it, those radio hosts were really pushing hard. They were like laughing so- Nervous laughter as yeah, well. Yeah, they were hoping to God he would completely backpedal, but at the same time, Kyrie wasn't going to say, I don't know what you guys are talking about, it's flat. You know, he didn't he didn't get up there and just start preaching the gospel, which was which was fine. I again, you heard that probably on the show last night where I was saying, look, you go into a new city. He's not he's there's only so far he can go with this. And plus, he cannot backpedal entirely. It's been too long. Uh, Shaq had a problem backpedaling from it after only a week, eight months. It might as well be an eternity in the flat earth world. So very true. Very true. So anyway, um, Sports Illustrated guys yeah. copy that link to Sports Illustrated and send it to anyone that says the Kyrie back down because exactly. Sports Illustrated is the Bible of sports and they will set whoever, that article will set whoever it is straight. Too there bad they're not doing articles on Flat Earth during the uh, Sports Illustrated swimsuit uh, issue. Of, <laughs> that's when they should do the Flat Earth stuff. They should. And, uh, and it's flat bathing suit on a woman who's 
not at all flat would also go over really well. So I don't even Kate know if Upton. they do. Do they still do the Sports Illustrated swimsuit? Oh my God, yes. Yeah. Every year since the 80s. I was around when they first did it. In fact, I had a friend, little, little story for you. Right. I had a friend whose dad wrote in to Sports Illustrated, you know, because they have the, the you know, letters to the editor in the, in the first couple of pages. And he wrote in the, the first year they started doing swimsuit issues and said that he was discontinuing his subscription. Be, he, he was a big, uh, uh, you know, very strong religious man. And he's, he goes, he thought it was immoral. You shouldn't mix the two, blah, blah, blah. But here's where, here's where he got, you know, instead of signing the dad, signing his name, he signed his son's name, <laughs> the son that graduated with me. And so we're like reading the sports illustrator. It's like, what? It's like, he goes, dude, I totally didn't write that. And I go, I oh, know you didn't, but yeah, it's great. Not exactly the way to be cool when you see your name in print no. coming yeah. out against beautiful women. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah, if it would be nowadays, like, dude, you gay? Exactly. Queer? You know, punch, punch, punch. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I remember back in junior high, people would, uh, boys would call each other gay lords in that game. Uh, Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah, gay lords. Gay or... lords and retards. Right. Or anything, you know, that's that thing has really not changed over the years. Anything people, that's, that, that's bad is gay. That's gay. People say that sort of stuff, yeah. In but, fact, uh, gay was the predecessor, I think, to lame. Now yeah. it's kind of replaced with lame. And lame, isn't that also as well discriminating against people who are uh, ability challenged? So, <laughs> well, yeah, but like a horse can pull up lame. That's true. So, right. Yeah, you know I'm saying. I want to thank Awaken Mind who donated ten dollars in the super chat, and that ten dollars will be going back to somebody else's super chat. I promise. I want to uh, also go into the uh, thanks Awaken Mind and everyone's up to his channel. Thank you very much for doing that. That is really kind. I want to go into the live chat and just say hi to who is here since it's been rolling along pretty fast. Flat Earth Accord, Steve Watson, Daniel Reza, Five Arts Liberalis, um, Martin Leakey and Carly Sunshine too, and Zulu One and Infinite Plain Society. Did I say Arwen? Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Uh, yo, ha ha, check me out is uh, somebody who's in here. So <laughs> it's a pretty funny name. Hi to you. Uh, and uh, I think this person is suggesting Kate Upton as one of the ones who uh, would be wearing the It's Flat swimsuit, which would be pretty funny. Good juxtaposition because she's definitely not flat. No, she's a size 12. She looks great. She does. She looks Mar great. Of course, Marilyn Monroe was too. But the sizing was different back in Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. Day. Yeah. So yeah. Marilyn Monroe, if she was a size 12 compared to Kate Upton's current size 12, Marilyn Monroe was thinner than Kate Upton if they were standing next to each other, right. according to what I've read. Yeah. Hi to all people, free people. And um, let me scroll up. Oh, Dina Walker and Bjork saves. I wonder if the Bjork saves has anything to do with Bjork the singer. Oh, no. Yes, it does. I'm looking at the icon. I really do like Bjork. Uh, the Hori Sheet Show is here, Chris Topher, and um, skipping over a few people I've already mentioned, Monique and Geocentric Ginger B Flats, that's Ginger Sugarbush's new channel name, um, and Bene444, Laurel Austin Irkchiles, Helioskeptic, and I don't want to make this just a show where I name people's names, but I also don't want to uh, leave anyone out, um, Andrea's Design. Jesse James is here and um, scrolling here. Hope I don't uh, skip anyone. Daryl Nicholson and um, Leslie Beckwith. Scrolling a little bit more. Should we get to the top? Tony Yesk. Um, Sun and Moon Group. Hi, Karen. Thanks for being here. O Double Leg FPV is here as well saying hi, gang. And I think I'm almost reaching the top of where I am and the rest of has disappeared off the screen and hello to everyone who's here i truly appreciate you being here if you have a moment to subscribe to the channel for more such amazing content please do and give the video a thumbs up if you like it and if you don't give it a thumbs down it's up to you um joey sylvie too and oh stephen chess as well so i think i've mentioned everyone steve watson crazy flat lady i better stop looking because otherwise i'll just keep doing this all day um, and you're like, oh, I just noticed Bill Keith was in there. Can't leave Bill Keith out. 
All right, Stevie Wonder. Uh, when I was very young, since my dad owned a radio station, he would bring me copies of records that uh, the record companies would send the radio station because they would get more than one, because there would be a copy that the DJs would use and they would keep a backup copy in the record library. And I'm talking vinyl. We're talking back in the 70s. Uh, my dad brought me Songs in the Key of Life. And that's, I can still see the album. I don't have it anymore and I should rebuy it um, because I do have a turntable orange uh, with the sort of unfolding petals or circular design on the front of it. Um, beautiful album, wonderful album. And Stevie Wonder has been in the news. Now, Songs in the Key of Life came out in 1976. And if you haven't heard it, you're really missing out. It's definitely what would be considered a modern day classic. Well, Stevie Wonder came into the news recently because he said that anyone who doesn't believe in global warning, warming, global warning. <laughs> we are the global warning. Anyone who doesn't believe in global warming, quote, must be blind, unquote. And a lot of people, flat earthers and, and, and others, attacked him because, of course, we know that global warming is a hoax that they've created that keeps us in this whole heliocentric uh, lie system that we're in. And to me, Stevie Wonder is a truth teller in all of the lyrics, in many, not all of the lyrics, in many of the lyrics in his album. Some of them are more um, light and some are very deep and heavy and address topics of the day and topics that are still current uh, way past the time that for example, songs in the key of life came out in the 70s. So to, to say that about Stevie Wonder, that he's part of the elite, because he is a wealthy man, very successful, to say that him saying that was a way to brainwash us into, not us, but brainwash the masses into continuing to believe in global warming and that whole system of lies is very short-sighted, pun intended. Stevie Wonder, I don't think, knows. He doesn't know that there's no global warming. He doesn't know, not that he mentioned Flat Earth, about Flat Earth, I don't think. So I think we should back off Stevie Wonder and appreciate him for what he has contributed and hopefully will continue to contribute. What do you think about all of that? I actually didn't even know that Stevie Wonder was a topic on uh, in the mainstream until you prefaced it in the show. Yeah. A lot of people have been talking about it on Facebook. Really? Yeah. yeah. Especially the I, global warming thing and flat earthers. Uh, some anyway, up in arms. Like what? What is he? You know, he's part of the control grid. We didn't think he was like that, but look, he is. So. I I don't know. I, I think he's just an artist that, yeah, like, like you said, he doesn't know anything. He's just following something. They're reporting on it. Yes. And. Yeah, the take. Yeah, taking a knee. I'm looking at some of the stories right now. People Magazine and Solidarity. Yeah, the the bigger story there. Not that we should dwell on that too much. Is Trump, you know, making some comments that just sent the NFL and going to be get a member that the NFL isn't even as saturated as the NBA. You think it's bad now in the NFL? There's a lot of again. I'm not trying to be racist. There's a lot of white people in the NFL. <laughs> the NBA. Not so much, and that well, season what do you hasn't mean about saturated. Saturated by flat earthers, or no, 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 no. I'm the talking the, uh, the the Black Lives Matter. Oh, I see. What the, you're that that connection, where a lot of the NFL players are are taking a knee, and you know, there's there's solidarity within the NFL. A lot of the NFL players are colorblind to each other, you know, because when you get up at that high level, it's like, look, we're just out here to try to stay alive. Well, at every level, that's how it should be. Yeah. Um, yeah. But when when he turns into a career, you know, some of the board, the well, barriers. Well, then we've got a, our president of the United States saying that we should build a wall to keep people out. The same people who helped build this country. Well, not not just that, but I mean, come on, you know, you're you're building a wall to keep it to, on the land that was theirs to begin with. Exactly. Like, like, they, don't forget, people, we have a state called New Mexico because it used to be old Mexico. Remember, this land is your land. This land is my land from California. They, you know, we learned we, that in school. We took by force, not, you know, you know me, rah, rah, go team USA. Uh, but we took by force. We took Texas, uh, Arizona, New Mexico, and that worthless chunk of real estate called California. Mm. The song should be, this land was your land, and now we'll make it 
my land Ooh, yeah, that's <laughs> as good. we take over. That's good. They could do a remake to that song. It'd be kind of vicious. So yeah, I, then, again, then who's going to like it? Most of mainstream wouldn't get it. But uh, those of us who are trying to explore different paths. For me, the, the Stevie really? Wonder story was buried under the massive weight of the two bigger stories, which was one was Kyrie Irving, but mm -hmm. the bigger one than that, which I'd, I should read the, the Time Magazine article, because it's probably the first time he's been in Time Magazine for yes. a while, B -B. is the rapper B.O.B. Uh, the Time Magazine article, pff, it doesn't get much bigger than that. It, it's called Rapper B.O.B. has started a GoFundMe campaign to prove that the earth is flat. You could not ask for better press. I mean, honest to God, remember what I said that even if Kyrie did backpedal, after a certain amount of time, it doesn't matter because you have to, all the same media people have to go run a completely different story. And that doubles up on, you know, and those those media stories stay out there on the Internet. B.O.B. has done this. That's the third time he's done this. Only this one's even bigger than before. The, the second time was after he came out uh, after Shaq was doing his thing and he's he decided he was going to be interviewed about it. And he, he started talking about it again. And people say, oh, yeah, rapper B.O.B. is still flat. But this time. He's taking it one step further. So if you allow me. You're our story time reader. Story today. time. Remember in kindergarten where they would make you get a mat out and take a nap? I was only in kindergarten three days. Really? Yeah, that's true. Why, did you I get was... kicked out? No. <laughs> oh, oh, seriously. It's you, funny. You couldn't keep the... up with the heavy duty curriculum? No, <laughs> no. No, 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 no like... I, was, I was moved forward or I was plucked out and then sent to a special underground school somewhere. No, I was, I was literally only in three days, but I do remember that. I do remember the, the, the I was kind of restless though. Anyway. So the story is called it's story time, boys and girls. <laughs> Today's story is rapper B.O.B. has started a GoFundMe campaign to prove Who's rapper B.O.B. <laughs> <laughs> rapper B.O.B. That's a good question, Sarah. <laughs> rapper B.O.B. was a high-profile rapper in 2010 who was nominated for a Grammy. Can you all say Grammy? <laughs> That's Grammy. great. All right. So <laughs> a Grammy is award given to... Teacher, teacher, <laughs> Billy needs to go to the bathroom. <laughs> all right, let's make it go. Now, a Grammy is, is given to people, singers especially, who are considered, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> considered more important and talented than other singers. So he was nominated for a Grammy back in 2010. And, I, and I'll die a happy man if I can remember the name and of the And by song. the way, they aren't given to singers who are more talented. Uh, they're just well, yeah, there's selected, some politics. not elected again, just like politics. Oh, yeah, there's, a pol there's some politics involved in any award show that there are, except for ours. Oh, yeah, there's the no Flatties, politics no Absolutely. politics involved. So when Patricia wins like nine awards and <laughs> nothing to do with anything. Hey, it's people's choice. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you're right. It's like, and the winner is, it's me. It's me again. It's great. I'll just take the piece of paper and just throw it away. We don't need this paper. It's all mine. Exactly. Okay. So the story goes, and it was written by Kevin Louis, L-U-I, mm -hmm. September, two days ago. Rapper B.O.B., who is not long who made waves last year but for tweeting that the earth is flat, now wants your help to prove his theory. Late last week, he started a GoFundMe campaign, and there's a link to it, Show Bob the Curve. Really? Show me the money? I didn't even realize that was the name of it. Aiming to find evidence that the planet is actually round. Help support B.O.B. purchase and launch multiple satellites into space, reads the fundraising page description. He will be keeping you updated with step-by-step -step documentation of the process. Help B.O.B. find the curve. Uh, since the campaign launched on September 21st, donors have given a total of 600 bucks. I don't know what it is right now. To the rapper, by the time of the writing, he is aiming to raise $200,000 for the project. In 2016, the rapper, whose real name is Bobby Ray Simmons, dropped a diss track. Wow. <sighs> on astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson after Tyson tried to convince him that the Earth is in fact round. Neil Tyson needs to loosen up his vest. They'll probably write that man one hell of a check. Read one line from B.O.B.'s track, Flatline. Mm -hmm. For his part, Tyson clapped back with a scientific explanation and dropped his mic on national television to demonstrate gravity. The view that planet Earth is a flat disk as opposed to a globular or globular shaped spheroid has been amplified in recent years by celebrity endorsements, reports CNN. CNN, this people still won't run my story yet. Apart from B.O.B., 
High-profile flat earthers include Tila Tequila, NFL player Sammy Watkins, and NBA star Kyrie Irving. However, it turns out, oh, there you go, that Irving could be just trolling everyone with his professed belief in flat See, earth. There you go, misinformation. Yeah, yeah, because he hadn't he hadn't followed up. And I know media moves pretty fast, and I, I get and that. And I'm very tired of Tila Tequila being mentioned as a high-profile flat earther. I don't know about you. You know, the one I wanted, because she was a conspiracy person, and now she's pregnant, and God only knows what's going to happen there, is Ky Kylie? Kylie Jenner. Ugh. I think that we should not hope for celebrities and just... I know. Uh, you know, our hope does nothing anyway. People will do what they will do. You know, um, you know what would help us? Mm -hmm. And I don't really care who it happens to. But one of these guys, when they get pinned down into a question or backed into a corner, well, how do you explain this? You know, the questions we all get. How do you explain yeah. this? They say, well, hey, don't take my word for it. Look up Jaronism's page. Look up ODD. You know, See, point point at somebody. I agree. That's the problem. The problem I have with rapper B.O.B. I really liked his album. I like the song Flatline. You know, we all can agree on that. But why hasn't he, especially recently, come out and said something like, check out the blah, blah, blah group on Facebook, or uh, what about uh, Jaronism's channel, or any other channel? I mean, I'm not playing favorites. I just, because right. he said it, I'll say it. He hasn't named any flat earther, Eric Dubé. Go there for more information on this very interesting topic. Why hasn't he pointed out anyone's uh, blogs, or books, or even mentioned any billboards, or meetup groups, or newspaper right. articles or street activism. B.O.B. Right. has not mentioned any of that. He's really, in my opinion, unconnected to those of us who are very concerned with this. We're pretty much the foot soldiers of Flat Earth. Right. He doesn't uh, acknowledge that we exist. And I also think that when he mentions the fact that he's going to try to do this GoFundMe to put satellites into space, it is perpetuating the notion that there are satellites and there is space. However, with all of that said, which smells like rotted fish, a.k.a. disinformation, by saying that, it does make one wonder, well, wait, why would he want to go fund me to send satellites into space? Aren't there satellites in space already? So it might make someone pause and think. And just putting the flat earth topic out there might make somebody investigate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I'm not, you know me. Any publicity is good publicity. And this story, for whatever reason generated a ton of interesting traction. Let me just give you like 10 or 15 real quick of just some of the people that covered it, right? Uh, on top of CNN, Asia One, Indonesian Times, Today FM, Science Alert, MTV UK, Russia Today, The Verge, AV Club, uh, you know, just about every local paper, International Business Times, Breitbart. Oh my God, it's covered at Yahoo News, BBC News, Gizmodo, Everybody covered that. I just, I just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Every major publication. It reminds me a lot of how many covered it when he first came out with the song. I don't think Cat Fancy covered it, and my cats are a bit angry about that. That's good. Like how you segued that into there. Is there a cat like within striking distance? Yo, know, there's. They're always like right over here, which is where a printer is. All three of them, Siri. They always sit there. Um, often they they come and go. Oh, that's nice. Anyways, anyway, so, yeah, yeah, back to this more serious topics. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, what does everyone in our live chat think about B.O.B.? Do we find him as a group to be controlled opposition? Do we think that he's got a master plan in mind? Uh, hey, hello to Sheeps and Neeps. I have been uh, watching your videos lately. It just popped up into our chat. I really, uh, I was thinking maybe you are from Aberdeen. Put in the live chat, Sheeps and Neeps, if that's where you're from. And excuse me if I am incorrect, if you're not from Aberdeen, Scotland. I was just listening to the accent and thought so. Let John. me know um, what you've got here. Dirge is in the dark as well. Uh, hello. And, uh, oh, Timaeus is asking me if... Uh, Cat Fancy Magazine is a real magazine, and yes, indeed it is, and no, I'm oh, not a subscriber. way worse than that out there. <laughs> and by the way, uh, John Desso had a good point, and that is 200 grand, what can you buy for 200 grand? Right, exactly. And, you could yeah. buy, I mean, and, they do build satellites. These things are built. I, mean, I don't, you know full well, I don't think that he's doing this for the money. He's doing this for the awareness. Because he has money to do that himself if yeah, he yeah, thought yeah. it was something. Yeah, ha having a celebrity do a GoFundMe campaign is rare to begin with. 
you know, unless you're doing it for like charity work in Africa or some something to that effect. So I don't know how that's going to pan out, but it is getting and again. You can't pay much. You know, you most people cannot buy that sort of press. So to have him on, on Time magazine, I'll take it. I want to mention that Sheeps and Neeps subscribe to his channel. He's here in the live chat, but just Sheeps and Neeps uh, did say that I was correct, guessing his accent was Aberdeen. I've been all over Scotland several different times. My ex-boyfriend, who I'm still friends with, is from Aberdeen, Scotland. And uh, I just knew he was from Aberdeen, an Aberdonian, actually, and I love your city. Um, so in the live chat, I've asked the question, do you think B.O.B. is legit? Do you think he's controlled opposition? And uh, we have a couple of uh, people saying different things um, about that. Let me, I, uh, hello to Charm Fear as well and the hard truth. Uh, Peanuts Clark says, Bob the Builder still believes in gravity and orbits. He's not real. Nathan Oakley, 1980 says, B.O.B. is working the system. Maybe mentioning satellites was very, very smart, as uh, there's enough globe nonsense to let it through the filters. Corey Sheet Show says, I wonder if B.O.B. will answer an email from me. I'm going to send him a message on the GoFundMe. He, 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 his, his crafty laugh. That's a Maybe. very good idea. Send him a message that way. Let's see. Uh, I've, got, I've got the chat box as well. Just Dan so. Lowe says B.O.B. is a fake flat earther. If he was real, he would send out a weather balloon instead. Hmm. Well, I think if if B.O.B. is legit and is only doing this to get press, that uh, most people think there's satellites up there. And if you say you're going to send satellites, it will cost someone to say there's already satellites. What is he on about? And they might research it. But I really oh. wish he did what he's done exactly as is uh, and, and also added a place that people who are reading about this can go for more information. His choice, don't care who it is. Uh, like I said earlier, Eric Dubay, Jaron, other channels, it, the Potter's Clay, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, a Facebook group, something, something, give us something, B.O.B. So hmm. Let's see what else is in the live uh, live chat. Unity Calling says no such thing as bad publicity, just what you always say. And what else? Um, let's see. Looking through all of the comments. A bunch of people said the same thing. Uh, Crazy Flat Lady yep. says, I slammed B.O.B. GoFundMe page. And she says she used her real name even. Uh -huh. Here's the thing, if because somebody said here, you know, he's but BOB's here to infiltrate flat earth. If you want to infiltrate flat earth, you got to actually get in, hence the term infiltrate. You've got to actually rub elbows with people. Yeah, he should be in our live chat if he was really into infiltrating or in much bigger channels, live chats, right? Yeah. To date, the only person that even came remotely close was Eddie Bravo. Yes, Eddie Bravo. Mm -hmm. And he didn't even meet anybody. He, he he talked to one person on Skype, and that was Eric. And other than that, uh, exactly. nobody else. Now, I'd... B.O.B. did mention Eric Dubay way back in the day. Way back in the day. So yes. that's something, but I you don't stop because one mention of anything is not going to be enough. There is an actual formula to that, that yeah. things need to be mentioned X amount. Of, I'm just going to pick the number 20, 20 times. You have to hear it before it actually sinks in. Exactly. You've got to do it on an interview, especially on video or audio, where it's like, here's, here's the channel you need to check out. That's, that's going to be the, we've, I've been waiting for that for a while. I'm, I'm dying to find out, you know, I mean, what if BOB said you need to check out the channel D marble. He's done a really good spirit level test. D I'd, period M A R B L E. I'd just say he's imagine. That's, looking man in flat earth so yeah that would be a mic drop moment right there it would oh yeah quick segue to b d marble because i know he well hopefully he's around i saw him he's in there here. he's in the live chat hello d marble. the uh if hey d if you if whoever's going to be saying for the next seattle meetup if you're going to do one uh one there's a radio station that wants to cover it down Ooh. in tacoma uh but it would be great just because there was a lot of people from the north and you probably heard this already that it was in the north somewhere like uh everett or, or muckleteo could totally be great. I would I would absolutely go to that one. I'm not right. that I wouldn't go to the ones in the South too, but I would. You're going to one in Los Angeles or Pasadena, California soon. And right. I heard right. And I, and I don't uh, want to say. Yard sell. House Bar is the location. 
Yes, they are. They actually paid to have me come out to this. So I'm not dissing anybody else. It's like, oh, why aren't you coming to Flat Earth Vancouver? Maybe like, actually somebody paid to get you out of Seattle. <laughs> Let's get him out of here. No. <laughs> California. No, that wasn't <laughs> it. <riddance>. I don't <laughs> Build think. a wall. Keep him out. <laughs> no, they, they, it, you know, this, this was actually a, a blowback from me harassing Los Angeles because I remember me a couple months ago saying, oh, Los Angeles, where are you guys? You aren't doing any meetups. And then all of a sudden Santa Monica and Rancho Cucamonga. And then somebody said, we should do one in Pasadena. And next thing you know, it's like, totally, Mark, you should come down for this. Like, like oh, I don't know. It's like, we'll fly you down. It's like, okay, I don't have any excuse. You know, somebody emailed me about that from that group and I never answered the email because I couldn't find it again. I think I got the email when I was in Michigan during Hurricane Harvey for my niece's wedding. And I never found the email again. So I wasn't yeah. trying to ignore anybody. So, yeah. So, I, uh, yeah, I will be going down there uh, to LA on the 7th. You've got your hotel room booked? I got my hotel room booked, and I will be staying there till the 9th. The meetup is going to be on the 8th. I love so, California. Love it. Yeah, so, it's going to be fun. Flying into Ontario, too, which is fun, better than LAX. Uh, hello to Synthetic Dread, also known as Musicians for Truth. <laughs> Um, let's see. Hello to Tony Yesk, who is detailing what he's eating, which is kind of nice. I'm thinking of doing a mukbang show, which would be an eating show at some point. And I've said this before, but never did it because DITRH said, yeah, let's do it. And then he said, it would be kind of gross with all of us chewing and talking and it would probably turn people off. But I still think it's a good idea. A mukbang show where we have several guests on and we all talk Flat Earth and other important issues. It's still a thing, huh? Yeah, mukbangs still happening. Still yeah. happening. Uh, let's see. We've got some stuff going on in the live chat that I'm sure people are handling. Oh, I just went by so fast. I missed out on what I was going to read by Woodford, who says, so the geographical coordinate system based on a globe model is BS. How come maps work? Why don't you address that question, Mark? Not that I can't, but people are, have, this is a person who's obviously in the chat and he's fine to be here. He is answering a, asking read, a read polite that one question. Again. Read that one again. Um, he says, so the geographical coordinate system based on a globe model is BS. If so, how come maps work? How Why come old, how, how come new maps work or how come old maps work? Because that's the bigger question. Like, like if the old maps were wrong, mm -hmm. how did people sail from one place to the other? They made constant course corrections. Mm -hmm. And as far as the new maps go, we know full well. Okay, one, the Mercator map, which has been in schools for 500 years, is absolutely dead wrong. And we know this. When you look at that school map, the one they pull in front of the blackboard, where Greenland's really, really big, and it shouldn't be. It should be tiny compared to everything else. The... That's wrong, and it should be replaced with the Gall Peters map. And so, I mean, it's like, honestly, how do any maps work? For me, it comes out because of the we have routes or routes, depending yeah. upon how you would like to say it. Yeah. But that's what uh, that's what we take. Anything on the ground is our we've already covered. Anything right. over water is handled by GPS now, which is Department of Defense, United States military, built in the 1990s, covers everything. It tells you where you want to go and it also tells you know it fudges the numbers enough to where you don't notice any different as and also you... gps is uh, cables buried under the ocean one example right. some people say um a kind of a satellite thing but it's uh in balloons uh or held by balloons up high possibly yeah um so the, most of the bandwidth everyone knows that the, the highest bandwidth is not wireless we all know this we we do this with our computers all day long the, you want the, the fastest computer speed, you want it hardwired. So that's how everything is for the most part. We're every you know, There's massive amounts of data in the undersea cables and the satellites handle, if, however they're held up there, handle minimal amounts of anything. If and, at all there are satellites up there, balloon right. or not. Balloon, balloon satellites, I do believe in. I do. Uh, you know, just because I've seen ridiculously huge things launched, you know, there's no reason to even fake right. a four ton satellite that knocks over a truck on the way out and has to be replaced. Though I have never seen one. I cannot say that that is true. But uh, when it comes to the underground 
cables underwater, not that I've seen those either, but we have much documentation of those being installed over the years. Uh, it's, it's unlike the ISS, which has no documentation of it being put together in space, right. uh, although there should be tons of photographs of that and video. Oh, there, should, there should be a fantastic time lapse. That right. is we do have it for cables being put under the ocean floor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, cables being put in the ocean has been done forever and ever. You know, that's old technology. And it's not even looked at as, uh, you know, being weird. So No, no, not um, at all. I mean, I, I actually think that's an engineering achievement-wise. That's a fantastic thing, which is you just fill a huge cargo ship full of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles of cable and then you just go real slow and lay it down on the uh, you know on the floor and yeah you you have extra distance because you're going down but really you're just laying like you would over land and hope to god you know you've you've mapped it out well enough to where you don't snag on anything i am blanking out on the name of the system that you would use by boat to navigate that they kind of changed and then called gps later you know the name of what I'm talking uh, about. Kind of. Well, you know. Mm, it, yeah. On a boat, if you've got your own boat, you even might have a piece of equipment in your boat that's got this name on it. Maybe somebody in live chat will come up with it, which is Maybe another way we can get from point A to point B because they're still using that technology and right. they are calling it satellites. So. It's true. You, so anyway, well, I'll, I'll try to look that up. Somebody else can... Uh, Somebody else can look it up for me and let me know what I'm talking about. Hi to Keanu Collins. Loran, he says. Yes, Loran. Um, right, right. Yeah, well, that was the old system, the old right. ground, the old ground-based system that they admitted was ground. Mm -hmm. And exactly. then they changed it. And I believe that they just slapped a new sticker on it. Right. They took the old Loran system, enhanced it a bit, and said, hey, it's GPS now. Give us more money. Um, hello to Alex Aquarius and uh, everyone Bjork saves and Racineism says as well, Loran, Stephen Chess, Felix I am, and uh, Keanu as well, like I mentioned. Larry Siebens is in the live chat and says a cable is what killed the shark in Jaws 2. Did you watch Jaws 2? Yes, I watched Jaws 2. And is that actually what killed it's the shark? It's true. There was a cable. I don't know if there was that much high voltage going through it, but yes, uh -huh. there was a... It was an, I don't think it was a, a long distance undersea cable, but it was a cable under, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Could have been a power cable. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. We can, we can, we can always dream. Yeah. Um, we have a person in our live chat named Rat Busters. So, <laughs> okay. We have Globe Thrusters, Globe Busters, and now we've got Rat Busters. The globe Thrusters is the porn version. Every, yeah. remember, everything in mainstream media has a porn version. Globe, thr globe Thrusters is that. Ah, okay. Not this show. Not this um, show. Not yeah. yet. When we're not in mainstream media. Yeah. Somebody come uh, up with a porn version of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. Go. No, thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, Eric Ali or A L L E Ale, I'm not sure, says, Hi, Patricia, sending you love. Thank you very much for that. Hello to Vincent P, who's in our live chat. And my favorite, Peach A. Uh, a couple of people are asking about the Milky Way and if it is a crack in the sky. No. Doesn't, why would it have to be a crack in the sky? So why does it, uh, when you see this sort of cleft appearance in artwork and supposed photographs that we don't really know, what is that? Of the Milky Way, you mean? Mm -hmm. It's just decoration. Why do you have pretty craters on the moon that don't make any sense, that come in at 90 degree angles, even though it's almost impossible to have every meteor come in at a 90 degree angle? Interesting. Very true. Very true. And, and we've had a flat earther doing an experiment using a, a gun and shooting yeah. the ground, showing that it would be impossible, that there would be skid marks all over the place. Oh, heck, if you're going to go that far, let me throw in a little dig. And that is for those people that, that are arguing against why there is no blast crater on the underside of the Apollo crafts when they're landed on the do moon. They have a, do, do the, does mainstream give us a reason for that? No. It was messy. We had to clean it up. That means no, 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 there's, like there's no, there's no, there's no explanation. No, just ignore it. And you understand that the, the first footprint, because they wanted to make it memorable, they did it on like an ashy surface. And look, it takes almost no effort to create a crater with any velocity of air. So, I mean, you go to the beach and you could hold up a little pile of sand in your hand and you can blow a crater into it with almost nothing. Right. You compare that to a 10,000 foot thruster that's on a, on a spacecraft, 
And the, the gravity variable, you know, of course, we know it's all made up, yeah. uh, that would be on the moon, and that you're able to put a human footprint on there. But right. something as heavy as that landing wouldn't leave any sort of crater at all. And even oh, yeah. the, the parts where the, I guess you call them feet land, aren't really leaving any impression either. So. Norman Rockwell, who was known for creating very realistic drawings of things, right? He actually did... I don't know if he did it for free or if he was hired by NASA, a little artist's interpretation of what the the what it should look like on the ground, you know, what the capsule should look like when it lands. And he had just bat, bare rock underneath those pads with a huge burn crater on that thing. And that was the exact opposite. We just, it was just nothing. It was a, a spaceship landed on something in this nice, fluffy, ashy ground, which wasn't dispersed at all. And which is why I still keep that one photo that I think I've sent you with but, you know, converging shadows and no blast crater. Fine. In fact, any anybody out there in the globalist world, tell me why there's no blast crater. Please tell me why there's no blast crater at all. We have uh, some globe proponents in the live chat, and maybe one of them will come up with it. I want to say hello to Hangnail, who's changed his channel name to The Faceless Enigma. And he has very interesting videos, and he's also been putting up uh, music. He's a really good guitarist. And check out his channel. He is in the live chat. You can click on his uh, channel picture icon and subscribe to his channel. I just recommend everyone subscribe to everyone. It kind of helps. It helps what you call the metrics. So that is Hangnail, and hello to you. He and I have lovely conversations where we exchange uh, books that we like, and he's turned me on to a couple of really good ones lately. So um, hello to Carl Steinbeck. And um, Zulu One is talking about doing some kind of thing, I think, with uh, Vinny uh, about talking about underwater cables in the future on some kind of a show. So that'll be good. This show is spawning another soon to happen show. So Vincent and Zulu one are going to do a show on underwater cables sometime this week. S somebody left me a voicemail recently and they mentioned that underwater cables also follow the same paths as planes. Well, that would make complete sense. Yeah. And boats. Yes, and that's why when somebody asked earlier how come the maps, which we say are wrong, they were a globe believer, work. Well, there's routes. If I think about getting to the grocery store from my house, I don't look at a map or a GPS. I just drive a route. I know the route is the easiest way to get there and the quickest way to get there that I've determined through time. I don't need to follow a map. So I could look at a map, and, and that map as well is based on routes that have just been put through time. Yeah, Pat, well but heck, let's go old school. The paths that we find in forests, yes. the paths that are at parks. It's like, look, once a route is established, everybody follows the path. That's all they do. Many of our roadways were walking paths. Right. Many of our super highways even were at yeah. one point walking paths through farmland and yeah. then became what they are today. Even planes nowadays, they will follow each other based on turbulence patterns. So if you have a plane that's 100 miles down range, and they go, oh, yeah, this is a smooth corridor. They will alter their path to follow that plane. Everybody, you know, everyone follows the leader. How many times when we've been driving, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, just follow that guy. Hey, just follow that guy. You don't even have to. You don't even give them directions at some point. It's like you, wherever that gray car is going. Yeah, yeah. You want to follow that gray car. You know, anytime you follow anybody, though, you end up in trouble. And that has to do with planes, cars and people. So true. To keep and, and lemmings. Oh, well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> that show that they sh that they gave to grade school kids you know, and, and disturbing. Or what your mother said, if if your friend jumped off the roof, would you? <laughs> <laughs> million people. Oh, no, no. It's a million people. It depends if you're East Coast or West Coast. Jumped off the Brooklyn Bridge. Would you follow them? It's like, I might actually, because they probably know something. <laughs> exactly. It's like, why um, are they going? Why are you guys going? Charlie is here in our live chat. Not seen him here before. And he is a globe believer who says, all you need to do is Google blast crater moon landing. And there's lots of sites explaining the lack of a blast crater. And he says, basically, it's the pressure from the rocket exhaust that was very low. The very low. I don't care. It, no, no, it's non-existent. I'm talking. Remember the beach analogy? I said, look, if you mm -hmm. have sand in your hand, you can. You don't even have to blow very hard. You can blow a crater in the sand. We're talking about no pounds per square inch. It's visible in thrust. 
None. There's nothing there. And you, you guys have any doubts? You email me. I will send you multiple pictures, crystal clear of that NASA. There's nothing under there. Nothing was dispersed. Not a grain of ash. Why was it ash in the first place? Why are you landing on ash? By the way, answer, uh, there was a guy in here. He said, Tinker, have you talked about Kyrie Irving troll interview yet? Yes. If you want, go to Sports Illustrated. Type in Kyrie Irving Sports Illustrated. You will find everything you need to know. He didn't Sheeps backtrack. And, Sheeps and Neeps, who I mentioned earlier, and I'm really happy to have in the chat just because I had only run across the channel recently, uh, says the footprints can't be there due to no moisture being on the moon, supposedly. And you would need moisture to actually show the definite outline of something. Is well, that indeed true? I no, mean, no, no. I mean, if you take no. any sort of really, really baby powder, talcum powder, whatever it is, you have a big enough pile, you can compress it. And it's and you can make a print. It doesn't have to be perfectly Is there something called desicate, desiccated I don't know what it's called. It's little white rocks. When you buy clothing or objects, there's a little packet of sachet, oh, yeah, yeah. and that stuff is in there. I think it's called desiccate or something. So yeah. What it does is desiccation is lack of moisture, right. moisture being sucked out. Um, right. As we age, we desiccate, unfortunately, um, our skin and everything. Um, but it, it's something that you put in your house if you've got a mildew a wetness problem. So if you took a pile of that white desiccant and you tried to put a footprint into it, in it, I would think that stuff's dry, right? It would yeah. uh, it would take a print. It would accept a footprint. But I don't know because sheep's and neeps it, point uh, ash, sounds ash pretty built. interesting. I mean, it's not bad, but there's there's stuff out there. It, again, you got to remember we're we're talking about what they used on stage versus what we have on Earth. Since we can't compare it to anything actually out there, we assume that they just used ash, some gray ash of, of some sort, and it compacted real fast. Um, quick little comment to somebody that mentioned something in there where he was saying that slow motion doesn't work on, on the moon either. No, slow motion does not work on the moon. It can't because think about it this way. Uh, if you are one-sixth gravity, if the moon is actually one-sixth gravity, then 180-pound man weighs 30 pounds. That means it's just the opposite, meaning all your muscles are super enhanced by the lack of gravity, so you should be moving around really, really quick. And even if you say, oh, well, the legs, it's kind of floaty because every step is extra leg power, it's like, okay, fine, that's for your legs. Explain why the, the arms are moving in slow motion because your arms weigh nothing. You, could, you should be able to do super, and of course, the feats of strength. That's the big thing that's missing. No feats of strength. Somebody should have been able to just take with two hands and just lift up that rover. Right. Because it weighs a sixth of what it should. Jesse James in the chat um, says, come on, Mark. We know they never went to the moon. Mark does know that, of course, obviously. And oh, he is he knows. talking to me or is he talking to Mark Taylor? Uh, we, oh, it was Mark Taylor. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, okay. Jesse. I know. I, I haven't seen. It, it, people keep mentioning this Mark Taylor guy. I'm going. It, it's, He's in there. He, is uh -huh. he? Oh, He's okay. talking with Pete Shea. They're having a little little argument over pro and con, and Pete is the flat earther, and Marcus is not. So, hey, it's fine. Talk among yourselves. Feel free. <laughs> Somebody said, Mark, I'm glad you fired your hairstylist from your early photos. It's like, yeah, it's called a hat. <laughs> That's really what... You mean when you had blonde hair when you were a young boy? Yeah, I'm still blonde, but yeah, there's not... not well, your hair got darker. Most people who are blonde's hair Oh, got oh compared to when I was really young. Oh, right. my God. Yeah, my sister and I were super blonde kids. Well, you were on Whidbey Island spending time at the beach. I don't know why it was that blonde. Honestly, yeah, it was interesting because we weren't in the sun that much. We weren't like California kids. This was... Right. Well, you don't get the, that much sun there. By the way, it is... The heat has not died down here. Uh, maybe and, Stevie Wonder's right about the global warming. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, you know you know where I am, right? This is Seattle. It's going to be 83 here tomorrow. Look, October is Sunday. It, and it's going to be 83 here tomorrow. I, I've, I've gotten sun. I've actually gotten a little bit of sunburn uh, from being outside recently. And, and I know I'm getting a little paranoid because I've been watching the movie Knowing recently with Nicolas Cage where the sun eventually fried the earth in the end. But it's creepy. And, and what I, I think I told you when I was watching the NFL, um, just, just checking out the, the protests, every one of those games was high, high temperatures. Every one of them. Texas, on this current moment, 86 degrees and it's 6, 16 p.m. So I would say that's probably normal for Houston. It's always really quite warm. 
I'm not a Houstonian by birth. I really don't like this hot weather. It's not I don't know why I'm here, for, but <laughs> not normal where I am. I mean, it's it's one of the strange. It's the hot. Well, I mean, they just announced recently where they said it's the hot. It's the driest year ever in the Northwest. You know, if we have uh, if we have found our way to talking about the weather, we really need to shape up or ship out. <laughs> Oh, I think it's a little late for that. But yeah, anyway, yeah. another another story for another time. Yes, knowing was creepy. Yeah, uh, Bjork Saves is saying uh, knowing was creepy. Um, hello to Nora, no one's flower, and the Nutcracker Suite. I like that. Hi to Helioskeptic and Rob Morrill, who also is saying a lot about uh, the movie Knowing. Um, Skyfly Bry, hello. He uh, just popped in, he said. Uh, John Telnot as well is here. And a couple of times we have put in a link to a billboard, which we need to touch on. I'm going to throw it in the oh, live chat right, right, right now. Right, right. And those of you who have five extra dollars, it doesn't matter. I donated. I encourage you to donate as well. If you believe in spreading the message of Flat Earth, if you don't, then don't donate. No one's forcing you to. Um, it is for the billboard that's going up in Raleigh, North Carolina, coming up in October, which as of today's date, September 27, 2017, is... You know, right around the corner, we're moving into October, my favorite time of the year. Um, anyway, this is a billboard uh, that DITRH has kind of started up. It's his idea to do. And it's called a, a Stranger's Guide to Flat Earth billboard. And uh, the information when you click the link will show you what is going to be on the billboard. And I encourage you to click the link and donate and get this thing up. We've, we've had people arguing whether or not billboards are a good use of money or a bad use of money. But I think to me, they're a good use of money because people who will be kind of trapped in their vehicles will see this and it will take a number of passes for that to hit home. But a billboard is usually up for a little while. And I think it's a great idea. And if we all band together and contribute something, it's not going to be a huge sum of money. And we will see proof of what the money went to because the billboard will be up. And since most of us that are that are here, you know, not most of us, many of us who are here are going to the conference, we'll be able to see it ourselves. And we're going to, uh, supposedly according to DITRH, they're going to be live streaming and holding signs beneath the billboard at some point in time. So that'll be exciting. Let's see, what else is going on? I've got somebody I want to say hello to. I need to find information about them here. Uh, this is a person whose name is Feral Feline Rescue and Foster Care. I want to say hi to them because obviously they're helping cats and I love cats. And uh, they feed new feral cats all the time. Six cats and four babies past couple of months trying to get them inside. And they've got an eBay store. And I definitely want to help anybody out who has anything that they'd like to advertise, especially if they're helping humans or animals. So this is Feral Feline Rescue and Foster Care. And they're not in the live chat now, but they often are and probably will watch this at a later time. But they do have an eBay store and they use the funds from the eBay store not to enrich their pockets, but to feed the cats. And it's Remarkable Rescue Plantiques, P-L-A-N-T-I-Q-U-E-S. Remarkable Rescue Plantiques, P-L-A-N-T-I-Q-U-E-S. That is the name of their eBay store. So go check it out and see if they have anything that you'd like to buy and the money will go to rescue feral cats. So. There you go. Cool. Hey, you know, I love feral cats. I love all cats, but feral cats are out there. I was thinking when the uh, Hurricane Harvey hit Houston, when a hurricane hits anywhere, wherever it may be, or any sort of uh, environmental disturbance, fires, whatever, earthquakes, of all the animals that are out there and what becomes of them. Of course, we focus primarily on humans, obviously, but what about the animals? Got to think about it. It's true. Let's see. We had other things we are going to talk about. Do you have anything that you want to mention that's coming up? Uh, yeah, I'm. It'd be I'm. Funny building... if you just said no. <laughs> no, 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 I'm good. No, really? no, 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 no. I no, I always have something. The I, I'm so busy nowadays. The conference that's coming up in Raleigh. Yes. They have asked me to do a media compilation. 
So if anybody finds television articles that have come out this week, because I haven't had a chance to catch up on anything, I don't care if it's from ESPN or, or any major news or if it's video especially, send me the link to it and I'll see if I can get it ripped because I want to include it. I mean, the only reason I haven't built a media thing yet is because, well, like what's happened recently, it's going to fall short. I mean, I, I'm, I probably have to wait literally within two weeks of the conference before finishing it. Uh, it's not going to be part of my presentation. They're going to use it as, as something else, but I'm building that. So if anyone finds some cool television links, I don't care where it's usually, if it's a sports thing like ESPN, uh, that's fine. And if it's covering BOB, it could be anywhere, but I'm looking for video links. So if you guys run into something, it's like, I don't think Mark has this, send me the link and you can send it to M Sergeant 23 at Comcast.net. That's M S A R G E N T 23 at Comcast.net. And you can't be overly inundated with things. If 15 people send oh, I don't the care. same thing, just assume he hasn't heard assume about it. Assume I haven't seen it. Yes. Because it's, it's very possible I haven't. Like, like I, what, as we were talking here, there's another podcast. The Jake Carney show is covering Flat Earth uh, on this one. It just, it just came out. Very cool. So I'm gonna, after this, I'm going to have to watch it. Dirges in the Dark said, I had a feral kitty and he tried so hard to be domesticated. The Flat Earth Accord says, three cat club represent. Well, that's my little club of people who have three cats. Uh, no membership dues required. Also, Seven Raven Wolf is a member of the three cat club. Um, Mark, I sent you some wonderful links that were sent to me by Five Arts Liberalis, who is in our live chat and I know there was a lot there for you to go through, but he's in the live chat asking, hey, did Mark get those things? I did get them all. Thank you. And they're very, very interesting. I love the fact that you tore through all those archives and found flat earth references and electric car references and potentially alternate history references. So thank you for that. Much appreciated. This now, is now Patricia's off the hook. Uh, oh, why am I off the hook? Well, because you actually sent them to me. Because otherwise, oh, you know, oh yeah, so. well, <laughs> because I could have, I could have thrown you under the bus and said, "Patricia didn't send me anything. I don't know what's going on." Never sends me anything, exactly. Um, it's like screw you. I only have to do four more shows <laughs> under the contract with you anyway. And then I'm getting a new co-host. <laughs> I'm going back to my trailer. <laughs> Makeup. <laughs> exactly. Oh, funny. I saw a weird conspiracy thing. Somebody yeah. sent me a screenshot that I'm wearing a wig and I have a full makeup uh, uh, crew here for me. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, Geocentric Ginger. Yes, I absolutely know that ODD has a movies and television thing. This one is going to be very specific. It's only for 2017. And I'm grabbing uh, not just movies and television. I'm doing a sports cast as well. And and putting it together in a certain way. So I, I do know the ODD one though. It's good. I like it. Darren FX Trader 2012 says, my mom really believes in UFOs. If UFOs exist, is it possible that they came from unfound land that we are not aware of at this point in our time on the stationary plane that we are on? Good question. Yep. I think or so. not, not just unfound land, but land that we once knew but have forgotten. The Land That Time Forgot, essentially. Yes, which also was a movie mm -hmm. and a remake and another remake. Anyway, the, yeah, yeah, absolutely. UFOs uh, are, I believe in UFOs. I believe in spaceships that are flying around. Sure. They have access to technology that we, for whatever reason, are not allowed to have, for actually a pretty good reason. Uh, the Unified Field Engine, if you guys don't know what the Unified Field Engine is, look it up. It is the balanced equation between electromagnetic waves and gravitational waves. If you had the proper fuel source, you could generate a field that could propel a vehicle just about anywhere at any velocity, at any acceleration rate. Uh, you wouldn't have the need for multiple things like submarines and ships and trains and cars. You just have one vehicle for everything, which sounds a lot like UFOs. And it also sounds like a certain movie where they had something along those lines, Back to the Future. Back to the Future was was similar to that, and of course, every episode of the Jetsons, the Jetsons Future, which we were denied. But yeah, the, the, of course, any civilization, you know me, I, previous civilizations have been here before us. Before we were here, another civilization had to be moved out. And those civilizations, the remnants of those have to go somewhere, and they have to go to lands that we don't have access to. Plain and simple. And they're not allowed to alter our history. 
uh, to a point where we get changed forever. Hmm. Game of Thrones now shows a small local sun in the title. Yeah, good point. I'm trying Sorry, I'm to look. find something. You continue. I'm trying to find something that I'm I... I'm looking through the chat room. You do that while I'm trying to find this thing I'm trying to find. Does that make any sense? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Alex says, to you. <laughs> Mom is 90% flat earther. She keeps studying it and has to hide it from her husband who recorded and archived the lost telemetry and communication tapes from Apollo. It's funny. Wow. Uh, Brian Burden, I hardly know that guy. Is there a difference between electromagnetic and gravitational waves? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The electromagnetic would be powered. Uh, gravitational waves w supposedly wouldn't be powered. So, yeah, yeah. Gravity. Okay. In mainstream science, it would be the gravitational waves formed by whatever mass we're on. And I, I'm not going to go into the buoyancy argument. Whereas electromagnetic waves are purely generated from a device that we create using whatever power source. Uh, the poor man's version of it, if you want to look it up, would be the Philadelphia experiment. That was a a poor man's unified field where they now, try did to that really happen a lot of people say that that's a hoax itself oh no i believe it because it was such rough technology and it backfired on them it's one of the only conspiracies we know where men died soldiers died you know horribly because what it it, it, it goes along the story of that einstein was approached and because einstein said we know this that he never finished the unified field so, but he, but they said, okay, what's the premise for it? And he says, well, you know, electromagnetic waves and gravitational waves. If you found the balance, you could be able to do such and such. And it's like, well, what else could you do? Could you make something radar invisible? Yes. So they just put crude generators on a ship, cranked them up. And if you believe the story, actually did a hyper dimensional jump <laughs> with no safety constraints and killed most of the crew. And killed, meaning half of their head was through a wall, and their oh yeah, yeah, it was a, yeah, it was it was something that we've delved into in Star Trek teleportation mm -hmm. accidents right. gone wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fact the very first Star Trek movie with Shatner and uh, um, uh, Spock and Bones and all those guys, they uh, that was one of the first things they covered in like the first twenty minutes of the film was a teleportation accident where the person just melted. It was gross. It was awful. I was always scared when they went uh, in the room to teleport and just was nervous because from a, from it was a, part, many shows had that in there when they were. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. And then there was somebody and they die or. There was people that had, they even discussed that in the shows that people had fear of being teleported. And from a nerd standpoint, it was an impossible technology anyway, because once you create a teleporter, you basically created a replicator. We all know the noise. I can't do it with my mouth. Oh, I, I the, do noise, the sound effect that that but, thing made. But basically, you're breaking down somebody, transferring them to a hard drive, and firing them off, right? Well, who's to say after you fire them off, you just don't make another one? You, you can just, it's just replication technology. And once you have that, uh, the, it gets really well, weird. Well, what do you think about cloning? I mean, I just don't see the possibility. And that brings us back to the rapper B.O.B., who initially did speak a lot about cloning, as did Tina Zakil. I hate to mention her name. It doesn't seem to me that cloning is possible because somebody would have to be cloned and then start their life off as a baby and have the same experiences as the as the person that was cloned yeah. in order to become that same replica of a person. I mean, I have a tiny little scar under my chin where I fell down when I was in a baby walk or fell down an open door to a stair, you know, down a stairwell. Tiny yeah. scar, you have to study me with a microscope to see it. But that thing, the clone would have to have that. Yeah, all the other versions of you on this wall actually have that little scar. But <laughs> what I meant, but no, what you're saying, what you're saying is absolutely right. Genetically, you can clone anything. It's just another process of it's the highest form of eugenics. Like right? Dolly the sheep. There you go. But we you know, could, that yeah. in and of itself, a sheep and the whole sheeple thing, maybe that was leading us astray from the true technology they may have. Cloning the mental process is tricky, but if you could just throwing it out there because we we actually watched a movie recently together that, that covered this which was dark city yes. if you could perfect the electrochemical reactions and and get it down to the, the you know the highest point you know of detail could you inject one person's memory into another person maybe hmm. maybe or i don't know if i don't know if we've got all the 
memories that they wouldn't want you to have and only put the go. memories that they would want you to have in there. Yeah. And I, I mean, control. have have we gotten that far? I don't know. I mean, I've never met anyone that falls in that category. Well, B.O.B., I don't know if he is still a believer in it, but I think so. Uh, a believer in cloning. And there are a number of people involved in this sort of research, not just flat earth, all the other important things that do believe cloning is true. I am not a cloning believer, but then again, anything is possible. Well, well again, just because you can clone the person's, I mean, isn't cloning the person's physical appearances 90% of the process anyway? I mean, as long as everybody, because most people don't talk to that person. So it's like, yeah, you if you clone and modify it with plastic surgery, and there you go. That's who this Why celebrity. Why would you clone or... and then modify with plastic surgery? Well, I'm just saying to fill in the. If you cloned, bit. wouldn't you? If you had that level of technology, why would you even ever need to do any surgery on something that's not even really human? Or yeah, it depends on the tolerances of the lab. So if you clone somebody, was ninety something percent sure you're gonna scrap them, or are you gonna you know, you touch them a little, little touch up. You know, just it's like because otherwise you're you're talking about you know if you have to manufacture the island of Doctor Moreau with all there, these like crazy freaks on it, right? When, Animal when, and human. If the car you've made is just close, you know, can you do some cosmetic work on it or do you scrap the whole thing? Right. I mean, we're talking about money, we're talking about time. What about the in utero trannies? <laughs> That part I don't get. Doesn't, okay, so I know people are transgender and some people have surgery. We all know this. Right. But there is a segment of the population that believes that there are in the womb people who, while they're in the womb, the mother has surgery on herself to change the sex and make that person who it was is to be born a baby boy chop it off and construct a vagina does, so it's a baby girl literally it, impossible yeah well no not not impossible but it make doesn't make any sense hashtag you, prove me wrong yeah yeah, yeah. IBS there's, there's, says. there's no reason to yeah do it wouldn't it. make sense if you can do that stuff just make it a girl or a and, boy to begin with uh, yeah yeah that's a lot of effort yeah if yeah for what <laughs> for what really yeah. um in the live chats, we've got Rob Morrill saying, I'm a native of Raleigh, North Carolina. Where is this billboard going up? Now, perhaps DITRH has an update on that. But as far as I know, um, the GoFundMe itself says that they're looking at multiple locations right now. Um, they're going to be getting a printed, not an electronic billboard in a very high traffic area. Right. So depending upon how much money is raised, that'll determine what size of a billboard they get. And then they'll select the location or locations if there's enough to get more than one. And as of this moment, the donations are at $3,435. They are looking for $5,500. And 77 people in the past three months have donated. So it is in the live chat. I'll throw it in there again or when the mods perhaps could. And that way, if you have a feeling you want to donate to this. I will also mention on my show. Yes, definitely. So cloning, no. B.O.B. might be on the right path. And then again. Hey, no it's, it's. Stevie freaking. Wonder shouldn't be slammed. Kyrie Irving hasn't backpedaled. Um, we've covered quite a lot of ground in this quite a lot of ground and a half or so. Again, sports illustrated if you want the gospel go there they will set you straight do not believe anything coming from the boston press remember this is politics no one in boston wants to believe that a man they're paying i don't even know what it is six million a year eight million a year i don't even know 10 million a year whatever they're paying that this guy believes in flat earth because this is a high tech city big you know big universities there and big tech companies there and they don't want to believe it so if the, it is straight up denial which is no no our guy doesn't believe it no 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 yeah i want to say hi to zoe of be here in love who says cloning in the copying of grown humans way is like the moon landings and space travel science fiction yeah i think so definitely think so um let's see <laughs> geocentric ginger bee flats otherwise known as ginger sugar bush who is the self-proclaimed at that time anyway worst name of any flat earthers channel on youtube it's horrible uh, <laughs> uh says that why don't uh, why doesn't uh, ditrh try to raise two hundred thousand dollars like bob hey why not right 
Yeah, yeah, it's true. Uh, I should mention the two hangouts. The I'm sorry, the two meetups mm -hmm. that are coming up that I just made trailers for. Uh, one is going to be in Portland on October 5th. Same place. The trailer is up on my channel. I, that's just a mirror of something they already did. And the one that I just put up uh, around lunchtime, which was Perth, Australia. Oh, wow. Is doing one. Now, there's an interesting thing that you had mentioned on your Strange World show last night on TFR, which I listened yeah. to, yeah. about going in to YouTube and setting something involving the language so that you can see how much flat earth stuff there is in other languages. Can you oh, explain yeah, you that better than I just did? Oh, no, no, it's okay. So if you go into, and hopefully you can still hear me if I set the microphone down real quick. Yes. The, if you go, if in, you had your mic on a stand, we wouldn't have this problem right now. Yeah, but then I'd have to be leaning to it. And then you'd be keep reminding me. It's like, Mark, yeah, I talk close to the mic. I just like teasing you're always, you I do not mind this thing. In fact, if people want me to change a different color, I think white nah, is fine. everyone's fine with it. It's I mean, I can make fun it. Fun thing to tease you about. Make it black, I suppose. I could paint it with something. No, no, no. But anyway, so. Why don't you paint that? it blue and put continents on it? Okay. Yeah, I would catch so much help <laughs> for that. So if you go in and type in, uh, for example, you type in, uh, English to French, right? English to in Google to French. Then it says, okay, enter text. And I say flat earth. And it changes it to terre plate, right? And I'm probably not pronouncing it right, but that's okay. I'm not French. And then I type in, you know, then I just paste terre plate into Google and I hit enter. You get all the French pages that cover flat earth. So when people say, is it just an American thing? Is it just oh my a God, Western no. thing? No. No. no, in fact, you can, you can plug Au that into- Au contraire, into mon frere. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, you could actually do that in YouTube so as well. So I paste that, Terry Plate in, and the forgiveness to the French people are going, oh my God, he's butchering our language. Mon Dieu. So- That was good. We, uh, you need to say, mon Dieu, like this. <laughs> so you go in there and here, Type it in, you get seventy-eight thousand results, but they're all uh, they're all in French, and there's a whole bunch of them, and they've been around for quite a while. There's one from eight months ago, and if I sort by I don't know view count, yeah, there's stuff going back quite a ways, and you can do this in any language. You guys want to? Newton suggests the German one. Oh right, uh, yeah. I could type that in real fast. So if I go English to German. It's kind of fun. And I did this for a video a while ago to German and I type in flat earth and I know what this one is. It's well, F L A C H E E R D E. Yeah. I don't know how to even pronounce it. Flasche, flash, flash. No, I'm doing my German family a great disservice, but yes, no, my grandmother knew German really well, but, uh, yeah. And you type that in, you get 51,000 results, but again, there's, uh, they're in YouTube and you can just, and they could be con as well as pro. They could be con as well as pro. So check them out when you get a chance, but they're great. You can do this for any language and they're out there for just about anything. You know what? Stump, stump the language thing. Find a language where you do not find a flat earth video. No, I'm not asking you. I'm just saying that it's, <laughs> it, you know, so Why if I go, <laughs> so I go, I don't know, Indon like I know, Indonesian. And I right. mean, just about anything you can think of is out there. Yeah. I've already, because people have already asked me to translate. The, I've sent them the clues so they could translate them in uh, Arabic and Russian and Slovakian and just about everything that side of the. Yeah. You know how I mentioned that Ginger Sugarbush had the worst name in Flat Earth or, you know, YouTube maybe? couple of people have come up with worse or funnier. YouTube says, well, that's a funny name as anyway, right there, but YouTube, 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 YouTube says yeah. that typo brahe, typo brahe instead of Tycho. That's, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, let's see. There's a bunch of other ones here. I can't remember. Um, Bill Keith made a good comment. I need to scroll up and try to find it. And, uh, oh, it's Bravo doing an interview with Dell and Gav. We forgot to mention that. Um, the link is in the description box of this video. So uh, that's a big coup right there. Way to go, Dell, and way to go, Gav. Pete Shea um, says, try it in Irish. That's funny. You want to hear a good interview? Uh, why is it oh, funny? Oh, in Irish. I just great. went right over my head. <laughs> try it in British. 
I have an interview. In fact, let me find it for you. Try it in like a Southern dialect. Just Uh, put in flat earth y'all. See if something comes up. (laughs) Y'all. Y'all. Ain't no flat earth. (laughs) Exactly. Y'all, y'all. There's a playlist. Hang on. It's my interviews. I want to see if I can find it real fast. It's an Irish interview that I did. Uh, And come on. Where are you? Interviews, interviews. There they are. It was one of the early ones. I should do something while you look up that to entertain people. All right. So I'm sorry. I'm going like way back in the day. Way way back two years ago. I was days. Oh, yes. And I was doing. I remember those days. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Liffy Sound Radio Dublin. You guys want to have a have a fact? Maybe I'll paste that in. You guys want to want to listen to to me trying to decipher the Irish language and just hanging on by the dear Irish language. dialect. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, dialect, which can seem like a language, I guess, to some who can't follow along. You know, sure. it depends on the thickness of your accent. Um, to some people, I have a an American accent, and to other people, I don't. It all depends on who's doing the listening. No. You put it in the um, description box. Excuse me. Oh, no, I put it in the live chat. chat. Yeah, so I put it in live chat. An interview with some people from Ireland. A long yeah, from ago. Dublin. Yeah, they and and it's great because they were as Irish as Irish gets, you know, from this little radio station out in a uh, little FM radio station out in Dublin. And I, I was having a tough time. It was thick. It wasn't as bad as uh, uh, Brad Pitt in like Snatch. You know mm. that movie where he was. It was he was talk, talk. I believe the dialect was Cockney, mm-hmm. like Cockney rhyming slang. Yes. Yeah. So. But that's hard for me to figure out, and you need to be in on the know to know that stuff. Oh, uh, I wait, and she yeah is correcting me. I remember that, but it was in English, not in. How do you even pronounce that word? Holy smokes! Mm-hmm. Not as Gaelic nil unknown. I I can't even. I I'll find it, it and look at it in a moment. Now, here's something funny. A little while ago, people were posting funny names that are worse than Ginger Sugarbush as YouTube usernames. And uh, Hube said that uh, Typo Brahe was funny. But then we have somebody coming into the chat named Psycho Brahe, who says, try again, son. <laughs> Psycho Brahe. That was probably channel just created moments ago. Good one, though. Like it. I love the internet. Please give the video a thumbs up with this year sock account whoever you are love it the the collective internet is so much more clever than the individual are are amazing really they i i said like there there was a show i said recently i was like you know when i when you're gonna inflict damage you know your blunt force trauma Mm -hmm. and then some guy types in blunt blunt force drama and it's like (laughs) oh that's better that's really good Force drama yeah Yeah. that would fit sometimes here in flattered Um, this is interesting. Flat Earth Vegan Amy, hello, love her, says, don't ask me how I know. It's innocent, I swear. But Bill Nye had an interview in Playboy magazine a few months ago, and Flat Earth was brought up too. Interesting. Playboy magazine, don't sell them short. No, they I, had, they've got really great articles. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, they, they have And some, they're like 34 double D. Yeah. Well, you know, you know what I mean. They surprisingly... And Hefner was big on this in the in the beginning. He hired top notch writers, and because well, why not, right? You know, get this thing as legit as possible, and he and it worked for him. They did they did have some nice articles to where when you were interviewed by Playboy magazine, it wasn't considered a puff piece. Yeah, I mean, even today, I'm sure they do good stuff. Con- co- compare that with is did I hear the rumor right? I should type that in that Oprah is now on six on the sixty minutes staff. Really. That's yeah. weird, but you know yeah, she's interviewed a lot of people, right? So, like her resume, they'd be like, "Yeah." Totally we have a new you. one in the chat, Thrico Brahe for the third. Nice. The third option has now Nympho Brahe. Chat. No, but no, no. I just mean that that's three. The third name that's funny with Brahe as a last name. Anyway, so yeah, this is great. I wonder who's making all these sock accounts. <laughs> Now Typo is talking with Psycho, who's talking with Thrico. <laughs> oh, killing me. Uh, you know, sock accounts can be made very quickly. It's very obvious just by what's going on here. 
but you know what? Have at it. Enjoy. Have fun. As long as you're giving the channel a view, that's good. Or a thumbs down or a thumbs up. It's all the same. Uh, YouTube says the Tycho Crater can be seen with the naked eye, but this would scale down to 114 meters, which we know cannot possibly be seen with our naked eye. Just the same as they say that we can see the actual body of the ISS in the sky when it flies by. I don't mean the light of whatever the heck it is, but the body of it when it's really impossible with the height they say it is and the size of basically a school bus you know one of my favorite was uh recently was di tier h's video about how the sun how the stars should not be visible from the distance they claim where he said that he goes do you realize that if the sun was six thousand times smaller than it is now that's only one light month it isn't even a light year and the closest star is four light years away. He goes, so when they say there's stars that are a million light years away, how in how it doesn't matter how big that sun is, how is it visible at all? Very, very interesting. And Basically, if, if the moon isn't 237,000 miles, miles away, how can we see a crater that's like 50 miles across? Right. I mean, I never thought about that though before. Yeah. And none of us did none of these things we just took it for granted because there's an app that you can find when the iss you can look at that shows you oh, that sure. the iss will do a flyby and then you can see a light on a on a clear evening we is take that, we just take it all for granted yeah right? we always have and well look at the the Kyrie thing Kyrie Irving thing yes yeah, so i was almost, just going to say i yeah. took for granted that he had you know backed away from back that battle, yeah and 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 a lot of people, a lot of other stories or uh, news agencies ran with it. They just kind of replicated the story, without even bothering to listen to it themselves. Only That's the serious the guys. Media for you, yeah. uh, it's a follow the leader game, lemmings, like we were speaking of before. And then some people are actually putting in information that is actually incorrect on purpose. Right. I want to say hello to formerly vegan warrior, the Vegan Dog Society is the name of his. Uh, his new channel. So if you like the vegan warrior, you will love the vegan dog society. I sound like a commercial for his channel, but uh, he's still doing his thing. He had his channel taken down due to the fact that he was too close to the bone on hoax events. Mm. So, yep. Hey to Twitwit, gathering around our Flat Earth campfire. We have many people who gather around the Flat Earth campfire, bringing those marshmallows to roast who aren't Flat Earthers, and they are always welcome here as long as they're nice. And nice doesn't mean you have to agree with us either. It just means that you're not really horrible. to Death us. to all who oppose us. Yeah, well, yeah. If you're not <laughs> with us, you're against us. <laughs> and we will find you. Exactly. Uh, Uber Flat Earth, hello. Um, pretty cool. Uh, let's see. John Telnot is here. Um, somebody else I wanted to say hello to. Tinker, who is saying the moon is beautiful. And in your opinion, the moon is there to be beautiful. In That's sunlight. basically it. It's just a nightlight. But maybe the sun itself, if the light were extinguished, and let's hope that never happens, would look just like the moon. Maybe the moon is a dead sun. Oh, well, it's a nice, it's a nice thought. But no, it was designed. No, no it was designed just to was be. Was it designed a to be an enigma? An, an inspiration. A As mystery? I mean, a mystery? <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah. That's mm. good. Mm. That's academy training for you, folks. Mm. Yeah, exactly. The, no, the, the moon, again, you, you've heard me joke about this. If they replaced the moon light bulb with a much, much brighter light bulb, it would be indistinguishable from the sun. Let's see, I'm looking through the live chat and uh, Flat Earth Freedom with... Je prefer flat is here who is complaining about a video that subtle infinity just put out not yet seen that one have to take a look i guess um helioskeptic has a new tweet from bob to report i follow him on twitter as well and he said bob said bob the rapper in a tweet just now that he will be taking suggestions for experiments with the GoFundMe account. So it's B O B A T Bobat. B O B A T L. That's easy, that's the, it. B O B A T L, excuse the me. The easiest oh, test, the easiest test you can do 
without launching a rocket, which would take years, an enormous amount of money, and plus you'd have to go through all the regulations of the Atmospheric and Transportation Safety Bureau. The easiest test to do, and I brought this one up, oh God, a year and a half ago, is either the two boats test or the boat and the plane test mm -hmm. or the two planes test, whichever one you want to do. You can either fly, you know, one, some people have suggested flying two planes, one, the Tropic of Cancer, one, the Tropic of Capricorn. And they should, if it's a globe, they should cover the same distance, right? But that's tricky because they're both going to be using GPS and you should probably not war deal with that one because they're both going to tell you exactly what the GPS tells you. The other one, though, which, which I came up with was you take two boats. You want to do it slow and cheap or cheaper. You take two boats. You put them down somewhere near Ant Antarctica and one goes clockwise, the other goes counterclockwise. And if they're, if it's a globe, they're not going to run out of gas and they're going to cross each other at a certain point. But if it's flat, the distance is going to be so great that they're not going to run into each other. They're going to have to refuel. Or you could take one boat and one plane, have the boat just sit still and have the plane go clockwise or counterclockwise. And you'd have to ignore GPS and follow the Antarctic coastline. And eventually you'd run into that boat again. All right. So the question that people will be asking is simple. Why hasn't this been done? Money. I know the answer in some cases it's money, but in some other cases we're not allowed to go in certain places. Yeah, yeah, they've they you can't put, just fly a plane anywhere. You've got to get permits, and you've got to you, you have to. You've fly got routes. yeah. You're you're talking about if if you're doing it with a plane, you're gonna have to have somebody's private jet, and it's gonna have to be a uh, a long haul jet, something that can really go the distance. And that's the that's the easiest way to do it. It's 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 fairly fast. You don't have to deal with rockets. You don't have to deal with engineers. And it's you might be able to pull it off. The only hitch is that the rumor out there now is that uh, you can't get below. You need permits to even go below the 60th parallel, which isn't even within eyesight of the Antarctic coastline. So that's the that's the test I would do if I had the money today. That's the test I would do. All right. It's not as glamorous as shooting up something that would have a satellite on it. So I'm imagining if Bob is legit, that he's using that imagery to capture people's minds and make them think. Um, it's a lot easier to explain because people understand that concept. Uh, you'd have to know a lot about flat earth in order to understand why the test you have proposed or the two tests wouldn't work if it were flat. Um, hello to Scott Watts, who says that we should give Russian vids a flatty award. Yeah, he deserves one for sure. I mean, he has a lot of things I don't, he's had, he's disappeared, but he has had a lot of videos that I don't quite believe, but he's had a lot of things that gave me food for thought and I do miss him. Mm -hmm. um, Piche was mentioning the moon and he says the moon doesn't exist as a separate thing. It's a reflection of the interface of the sun. If you turn the sun off, all the luminaries would instantly go out. Possible. Maybe. Kind of like uh, again, I'm not gonna... Christmas tree lights or the type that don't, one goes out, they all go out. Sure. Very interesting. I mean, if the, if the sun is a transformer, then it's possible that it powers other things. Sure. Sure. John Desso says the sun is just a kind of element in a light ball. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Eric Alley, I'm just going to say Alley, A-L-A-L... E A I L E. Sorry, only one contact in. Not working that well. Ale. Says anyone interested in recreating the rising helicopter experiment as a flat Earth hangout? That would be really interesting. We have a helicopter pilot, and I know we have pilots within flat Earth on a helicopter. A passenger filming. We know it's not going to, be. and then we go up and we wait for the Earth to turn beneath beneath us if that's the experiment they're talking about. Uh, the laser on the boat experiment is also being suggested by Eric. So yeah, I mean, there are people who need There's... these experiments done still, although these most of them have been done already. Um, just like debate. A lot of people think the time for debate is over. It's time for war on NASA. And the time for experimentation is over. But when you say that, although I we tend to agree with that because here we are many of us have been around since 2015 doing this but there are people who are falling into the flat earth i don't know rabbit hole right now from other rabbit holes they came through right this very second 
and they don't know anything about any of this and they need to see the experiments. Right. And some of the best experiments have been buried through time or some of those channel, uh, the content creators have disappeared. Um, so we still need to have debates for those who need to be convinced. Not the person that you're debating against necessarily, but those who are potentially watching the video or the conversation if it's on Facebook. We still need to do the experiments for the same reason, to keep it fresh, to keep, to keep, um, to keep eyes on this sort of thing. Sure. Now, we were talking, we only have a little bit of time left. We were talking earlier about, as we were kind of laying out what the show was going to be about, what is a real flat earther? I've heard some flat earthers say about other flat earthers, you're not a real flat earther. So to me, there is no standard for what a real flat earther should be. Anybody who has this viewpoint is a flat earther. There's no real or, or pretender because you don't believe the same map as somebody else, or right. you don't run your channel the same as somebody else. Or um, if you're a Christian, you're not a real flat earther. You only can be a real flat earther if you're using experimentation. Or the opposite is true. You can only be a real flat earther if you believe in Jesus. All of these things are really walls that we need to not build, or if they have been built already, tear them down. Anybody who's here is a real flat earther. and that's something that we need to get rid of because that's globe thinking, globe mentality. Bye-bye to that. I want to say thank you to Simone. Simone has sent me a package from New Zealand. And this package is some gift cards. She lives in Auckland that she received that she has no need for. And these are gift cards that can be used in New Zealand or anywhere. And she's given them to me to bring to the Flat Earth Conference in Raleigh, North Carolina in November to give away somehow to somebody. So I'll be bringing these with me. I just wanted to thank her for doing that. She didn't need to. She had them. She was generous. And I will be passing these on somehow to somebody at the conference. So thank you so much, uh, Simone from Auckland, New Zealand. Funny thing is, is that she sent these out quite a long time ago. She asked me if I received them and I said, yes. And this must be, although I don't believe in the Mandela effect, I believe that's memory gone wrong. I remember the moment of opening up my mailbox and getting a letter from Simone, opening it, and there was like an Amazon gift card in there. And I remember putting it in a file cabinet over here to bring to the conference. Well, guess what? I've torn that file cabinet apart and I didn't find it. And then Simone said, no, you didn't get it because it got sent back to me because one number on your zip code was wrong. So I have a Mandela effect memory. Hmm. Clear as day that I received that package. And I think that's probably just <laughs> bad memory, obviously, but it was perplexing. I guess we've all had that happen to us. I don't think so. You just don't remember. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, oh, yeah. Uh, let's seriously. see. Andrea's design here uh, saying, seriously, considering the necessity for all science books to be rewritten for future children. Oh, yeah. That would be a book burning worth happening, the science books. Not that everything in there is wrong, but a large percentage of it is wrong. And we're not talking just about science and flat earth. We're talking about cultures, histories, all of it uh, needs to be redone from the ground up because people are getting indoctrinated, not about just the shape of the earth, right. about everything. Everything. Right. Let's see. Demaya says, no worries. It's just the Patricia effect. So um, Alex Aquarius says, I didn't believe the Mandela effect. And then one day I remembered I always did. <laughs> Ah, uh, I see. What yeah, it's good. good. It's good. See, the internet's clever. Linda Randolph says, no, no, no. The Mandela effect is real. So, you know, everyone's got their opinion on that. And all opinions are welcome as long as you're nice within this chat. I want to say hi to Jim Panda. And hey, Jack Frost is here. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, anybody else I need to say hello to? We did see Jed Skeptic Media in here. And... Uh, Mark I, Taylor. I see the award nomination, Geocentric Ginger. I, I, I'm i going to note it. And Captain BS is here as well. So, 
And I guess that is about that. Yeah. So tomorrow evening, I think you and I are going to do a radio interview. I'm so excited. I can't remember who it's with because I don't have my email open at the moment. But so we're doing uh, a radio interview and you don't know who it's. Do you know when? <laughs> it's tomorrow at, I believe, 8 o'clock your time. And these are people who want to learn about Flat Earth, I guess. Or yeah, yeah. are they super anti and want to No, no, no. I, you can assume, actually, that they're not. If 95% of the interviews I've done are actually neutral or pro, then I think these guys are going to be fine, too. Plus, everybody that's come against me, with the exception of one, let me know in advance. That's nice of them. Yeah. We have Greer, the beautiful female black cat here who just came over. Hi, One Greer. of the three. Greer is a sweet cat. She has the most beautiful meow compared to her two brothers. It's very sweet and innocent. No, seriously, it's, it's beautiful. All right, I guess that's it. I really enjoyed everyone being here. We had well over 200 people in the live chat. I appreciate it, and I hope you give the video a thumbs up on your way out the door. And uh, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to Mark's channel, subscribe to each other's channel, and continue the progression in looking at all things, not just flat earth and keeping your mind open. So Mark, we'll see each other tomorrow on that radio show, and I am yep. going to start reading uh, the day after that, um, um, Friday, I'm going to start reading uh, again um, books here, like I like read 1984, and uh, the next book is going to be uh, Brave New World. I read a few chapters of it months ago and then gave up, but I'm going to take the contact out, put on the glasses, and right. start reading on Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern here on this channel. Uh, as many pages as I can get through in one sitting of Brave New World, and I hope you will enjoy that with me. Those videos don't get much viewership, but those who do enjoy being read to will enjoy the book. I haven't read that book since back in the 80s, so it should be fun. And that's a complicated book to read, not only because there's lots of stuff about orgies in there, which might offend some, but nothing too graphic. Not me. The, the character, <laughs> you'll be like, <laughs> yeah. You're right on. <laughs> yeah. Orgy porgy. Woo. <laughs> no. um, it's not even a term. Yeah, well, it's in the book. It's, Orgy it's, Porgy? Yes, it certainly is. Not to be confused with Georgie Porgy. Yeah, not to be confused at all. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the other aspect of reading that book is that all the characters, the way it's written, sort of talk at once. So I'm going to have to do different voices. So that ought to be very interesting. Yes, right. it will. Yeah, yeah. All right, until we meet again, Patricia Steer and Mark Sargent signing off. And keep it flat. Do your own.